Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. Let's learn how to make these teensy fabric baskets with handles step by step. Now let's prep the fabric we're gonna use on the outside of the basket and I like to do that by spray starching my fabric and setting that with the heat of a hot dry iron. Then I'll repeat the steps to starch and press my lining fabric as well. Next, we cut a 10 inch by 10 inch square from each of the two different fabrics. This is my lining and this yellow floral will be for my exterior. For those of you that are quilters and maybe have some pre-cut 10 inch squares on hand, just grab a couple of those. For the basket handles, cut two strips that measure two inches by seven inches from whatever fabric you want. I'm just gonna be using the same print as the lining fabric of my basket. Now to help give the outside of our basket a little bit of body, I'm placing the exterior fabric square on top of a piece of light fusible batting. You could also use fusible fleece or regular quilt batting. If it's not fusible though, make sure you stitch through it to hold the layers together. Now the lining fabric square and the two strips for the handles get a matching piece of cotton woven fusible interfacing. And of course I'll link to both of these products in the description box below. Then grab your iron and ironing board, fuse all the fabrics to their corresponding interfacing pieces following manufacturer's instructions, and we're ready to start. All right, y'all, exterior fabric is prepped. So is the lining and the two strips that we're gonna use for the handles. Put in a size 8012 universal sewing machine needle in your machine if you don't already have one. Grab the thread of your choice, and let's make one of these super cute teensy baskets. Now let's flip both of the fabrics over to the interfacing side and I want you to trace out three inch by three inch squares on each of the four corners of both of these fabric panels. You can make a template out of cardstock like I did here or you can also just use the corner of your ruler and measure three inches over and three inches in and mark it. Then we're going to go in with some scissors and we're going to carefully cut out these squares from both our lining and exterior fabrics. Now set the exterior panel and lining aside. We're gonna work on the two little strips for the handles next. Flip them pretty side face down on your ironing board, crank up your iron, and then we're gonna fold these in half lengthwise and press to create a center crease. Then we'll open it, fold in both long outer edges, and refold the whole thing right down the initial center crease line to create a double folded strap or handle. Repeat those steps to make a second strap and at the sewing machine with a longer straight stitch, go ahead and top stitch an eighth of an inch in along both long edges of both of these straps. All right, now let's go ahead. These are all the components you need to make the whole basket. So set this aside, set the lining aside for now, grab the exterior and you're gonna start lining up. The corners that you cut out, I want you to match up this straight edge with this one with pretty sides touching. So we're gonna bring it up like this. And if you cut exactly three inches by three inches, it should align here and here all the way to where it stops. So put a clip there. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So here's another one, the two edges, you bring them together, pretty sides touching. Make sure everything is nice, flat, and even, and put your clip. Okay, you're gonna do that to all four corners, and that's what's gonna give us the boxy shape. The sewing here is gonna be from top to bottom, back stitch at the beginning and end, using a quarter of an inch seam allowance down each of the sides that you clip together. Right, so it should look like that now. You're gonna repeat that to do the exact same thing with the lining. Now, I like to sew a slightly larger seam allowance in the lining so that I get a nice smooth finish inside of my little basket here, which is a tip that I often share for bag making. So when you go to sew this, you're still gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna draw it out so hopefully it makes a little bit more sense for y'all. But you're gonna go a quarter of an inch in for about an inch. Then after that, I kind of just push the fabric out a little so that I can make it take a slightly bigger seam allowance like this. Does that make sense? So if you're just a beginner, ignore this and just do the same straight quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down. But if you're a little bit more advanced, you might want to implement this tip. All right, so these are the components. Next up, we are going to baste in the straps to the exterior. So grab the outside fabric, and then you just pick two sides where you want your handles to be. So I'm going to take one of these strips and I'm going to fold it and flip it so that the edge is flat. So instead of having it be like this, like you make a little smiley face first, 
and then those raw ends, just turn them that way and that's how you're going to insert it here. I like to place mine about half of an inch to three quarters of an inch from the side seam so you can measure it with a ruler and mark it so that you know exactly where to put it. So like that. And then opposite side of where you put that first handle is where you want to put the next one. And then we're going to base stitch. That means a long straight stitch across the top here at an eighth of an inch down just to secure these guys in place. And we can make sure that they'll be exactly in the position they need to be when we go in and attach the lining as well. Now we need to attach the lining and the exterior, but I like to go in with scissors here and in the seam allowance of the lining pieces, I like to shave about half of the seam allowance off, kind of tapering it towards the top, okay? So I'll do that to all four. This just helps reduce a little bit of bulk on the inside, okay? Now you need to flip the lining right side out and place it inside of the exterior matching up the four side seams and placing your clips. All right, now you'll need to sew around the top using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but you need to leave an opening so you can flip this right side out through. So it might look like there's no room for leaving an opening, but as long as you didn't use like a super thick bulky batting, this works out perfectly fine as you can see in the other ones that I have done, okay? So I want you to pick a side that does not have straps. So for me, I can see my straps are here and here. That means either this side or this side can be my starting and stopping point. Because there's nothing in there, it's gonna be really easy to leave an opening without the added bulk of the strap. So make sure that you do that and pick a side with no uh, straps in it. Next, you're going to leave about a two and a half inch opening right here. This is all the room you have, but it turns out to still be fine for turning it right side out through there. So I want you to make a mark. That's going to be your starting point. You'll backstitch there. You're going to go all the way around sewing. And then when you come back around this way, stop over here. Okay. That means this whole area needs to be unstitched. You got to leave that hole in there. You can even go a little bit further here if you wanna have the most space possible. But you want to avoid having a hole anywhere near the corners here, and that's why I'm telling you to leave this opening along a straight edge. And here's a tip. Because I can't really get to this in here, even if I remove the accessory bin, the project is too small. It doesn't allow me to reach all the way in here without really distorting the fabric, so I am going to stitch it from the inside instead of from the outside. So like this. And I can see my mark is here and I need to leave an opening. So I'm going to open the inside and slide the presser foot to the inside of the project and begin sewing here. Remember to backstitch at the beginning and end. Okay, I see my markings here so I know I need to stop right after I pass that corner to leave an opening right here. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that there's no seam allowance that's sticking out tall here that we might need to trim. Just trim away your threads and then we're gonna find our opening, which for me is right here. And we're gonna carefully flip this whole little pouch out through here. If you backstitch at the beginning and at the end and you take your time, it works out. And you get such a nice clean finish in the finished pouch that I think it's worth it. All right, and then push the lining inside. And this is the time to grab your iron, ironing board because you're gonna give it a really good press a few different times here before we go into top stitch around the top and that is going to help us keep this fabric tucked in and give us a nice clean finish around the top even though there's a hole there. Where the hole is, just make sure that you tug on it on both sides to get the raw edges of the fabric to go into the inside. Press it so that it's in line with the rest of the top of the basket and just put a clip there for now. Now, there is another step that you can add here if you wanted to add a little bit of more stability and rigidity to the bottom here. I went ahead and on this one put in a little plastic piece of template plastic is what you see is in there giving it that shape. So that is something that you could do too and I'll show you how to do that now. 
Now, if you want to add a little bit more stability to the bottom here, you can cut out a piece, a three inch by three inch piece of template plastic. And these I got at the dollar store. They're just like those chopping mats. You can cut it down to size. I'm going to take this clip off, fold it up just to get it in between the layers and just get it to pop out and lay out flat underneath. And you know that you'll have a little bit of extra sturdiness there at the bottom of the basket like that. Okay. Now let's go in and at the sewing machine, we're going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's super close to the top edge. And we're going to top stitch all the way around to secure the lining in place and close the hole. Now I always like to top stitch from the pretty side, but I can't really get this to be in there like that. So I'm going to position it lining side out so that then I can do what we did before and scoop the presser foot inside. Remember this yellow print is my outside fabric. So if I orient it like this and then come in here like that, then I am top stitching from the pretty side because that's what I'm going to see on the outside of my basket. So I can be a little bit more careful here lining things up. Lengthen the stitch length since this is top stitching and we're going to go all the way around the top close to the edge. And that's it. Let's flip it again, right side out and give it a nice final press since we're done. All right, y'all, so there you have it. That's how I like to make my little teensy baskets. They're small, but they do hold a bunch. Here I have a ton of sewing clips, some sewing essentials in here. This is great if you need to keep some of your supplies near your sewing machine. Maybe you're teaching someone how to sew. I can even see these as little mini Easter baskets. You can put a gift card, a couple chocolates in there and tie it up with a ribbon. And that way the recipient can keep the little basket to store other stuff later. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you click the subscribe button if you are new to my channel here. Let me know what you plan to use your little teensy baskets for in the comments below, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.